So when you're verifying an inverse, as I mentioned, this will be the last one we'll go through. Basically, all you guys are going to do is evaluate for f of g of x. And when you plug in the g of x function into the fx function and you simplify that to x, then part one works. So remember, f of g of x basically just means f of g of x. Right? You're plugging in the g of x function into the f of x function. Well, what does the g of x function look like? Instead of writing g of x, g of x is the cube root of x minus 1. So basically, I have cube root of x minus 1 being cubed plus 1. Does everybody see that? Instead of having x cubed, I replaced x with the g of x function, where g of x is the cube root of x plus 1, or x minus 1. So now we look at this. Now we simplify. The cube root, something, cube root cubed is going to undo each other, right? Those are inverse operations. So therefore, now I'm left with x minus 1 plus 1. So therefore, that just equals x. So part 1 works. Now let's do part 2, g of f of x. Okay, So now, basically, that means g of f of x. Now we're going to plug in the f of x function into the g of x function. So I have cube root. Instead of x, it's going to be x cubed plus 1 minus 1. Thereby see how I plug them in. I didn't use color coding this time. So now, I don't really need parentheses around that. I just use parentheses to simplify it. So if, since I don't need, really need parentheses, I have plus 1 minus 1, which is going to go to 0. So then I have, again, the cube root of x cubed, which equals x. So since the composition both ways simplifies to x, I can verify that they are inverses of each other.